My name is Ivan Kiris. I work at Bakun, learning talk about web platform tests. Uh, first, there is some documentation that you can read. There's a website called webplatformtests.org, and the repository also has a README with uh, interesting things to get started. Uh, so the first thing you want to do is set up or clone the repo, and then uh, you need to change your file. Uh, it expects webplatform.tests and some other domains to exist, uh, result to localhost. And then you also need to install virtual n, this is currently missing from the documentation, there's an issue about this. And then you should be able to run the tests. Um, the simplest way to run tests is to spin up the server, there's a custom server written in Python, dedicated for web platform tests. Um, so if you run the wpt serve command, it will start the server, and you can load test cases in, in the browser. Another way is to run wpt run, and this command takes a few more parameters uh, one for the browser that you want to run. And then a path or a list of paths for the tests that you want to run. Uh, there's also a browser specific integration for the different browsers for running web platform tests. Uh, I'm not so familiar with those. Uh, I think also know that JS uh, is able to run web platform tests or a subset of them. I'm also not very familiar with that, but I know that it's a thing. Uh, some tests require HTTPS, um, and for those tests you typically can't run them manually. You need to use the WPT run command. Uh, the reason for this is that WPT run sets up the browser to ignore certificates. I think. Uh, otherwise you need to install a root CA or something, and you probably don't want to do that for security reasons. Um, there are different kinds of tests. The most common one is testmarnet.js uh, for scriptable tests. There's also ref tests for things that you can compare by taking screenshots of two different pages and comparing them. Uh, for most tests, those are the kinds of tests that you want to write. There's also visual tests for things that need, um, can't be done by ref tests. Maybe they need, uh, I can't think of a good example right now, but there are a bunch direction. Of, what's that? Basically, I focus on elements or things like that sometimes, or type something or work, things like that. Yeah. Some uh, can be, yeah, no, no problem. Yeah, there are some tests in CSS that are visual tests. Uh, I try to avoid writing visual tests because uh, they're painful to run for front of end. There's also web driver spec tests uh, for testing the web driver spec. Uh, and then test driver.js is a uh, script to <coughs> hook into WebDriver, so you can ask the browser to click on a coordinate or something, uh, which is different from uh, firing an event in JavaScript, because it will be a trusted event. And then there are manual tests, which require user interaction, like scrolling or doing something. Um, so for test harness at JS, there are some different kinds of tests. The simplest one is called single page test. Uh, currently, you don't need to opt in to single page test. You just call a certain functions, and then you call done when the test is done, and that's that. Uh, 
Uh, I proposed making an opt-in to this feature so it's more clear what's going on. So maybe in the future we will have to call single tests uh, to use this feature. Uh, another test is the test function, which is a synchronous test. Uh, when this function returns, if it hasn't thrown, then it passes. And a failing assertion will throw an exception. There's also asynchronous tests. We need to do callbacks or something, or wait for an event to happen. Um, you need to use uh, step func, which is uh, a method for test harness.js so that it can capture failing assertions. If you just use a vanilla function here, then it can't associate a, a failing assertion with a test, because you might have multiple async tests. So you need to use uh, step or step func, or here, step func done, which is implicitly calling the done uh, method if it passes. And then there's promise tests, which is useful for things using promises. Uh, if the promise chain results, then the test passes. And if it rejects or throws an exception, then the test fails. There's also promise rejects, which is the same thing but has the opposite pass condition. So it expects the test to reject. Uh, <clears throat> if you want to mix callbacks and promises, it's kind of awkward with the promise test because you need to manually create promises. Uh, another way is to just use single page tests, which will fail if there's an uncut exception anywhere or if there's an unresolved promise anywhere. And in this kind of test, you don't need to use step <coughs> Um, you can just use plain functions in callbacks and it will probably fail the test because there's just one test for the page. Um, there's also a feature for testing multiple globals, like if you want tests in window and in a worker. And have a single JavaScript file, and it, the server will provide the boilerplate for the HTML uh, for both cases. And this is called .any.js. So in this case, you can specify which globals you want to test. And if you say window, comma, worker, it will test in window, dedicated worker, shared worker, and service worker. Uh, there's also uh, a global property exposed on the global with uh, some utility functions to be able to tell if you're in a window or in a worker. And the other options is .window.js for window specific tests or worker.js for dedicated worker tests. Um, for F tests, they are not using test on the JS. They're just HTML pages or SVG pages or whatever. And the test has a link element which points to a reference, uh, which should have pixel perfect rendering to the test, but it should be achieving the rendering in a different way uh, so that it's the same bug shouldn't fail both in the same way. Uh, so that would be a point test test. So for an, the common thing is to just have a green box or something and say that it, there should be a green box or there should be no red or something. 
there's also a no match uh, link thing, so you can have a test and reference that are intended to have different rendering. So the test would then fail if they have identical rendering. Is it used widely? The nuts? Yeah. I don't think so. Because it's probably not supported in existing WebKit. Uh -huh. okay. Yeah. I mean, maybe not the official ones, but, but in WebKit you also can do that. Yeah. Not much anything. I was asked to do that for a review. I mean, a reviewer okay. asking me to do that in, in a case. Okay, and uh, it's uh, just with no match, or how do you... Do I don't know. I don't remember exactly. I think the file name is uh, no match. Uh, yeah, something like that. Okay. I don't know if for, uh, for WPT test is supported. But, uh, but, the, but in the importer should uh, update the file name if it's for. Yeah. I'm not sure if it's doing that. Okay. So the server used in web platform test is called WPT serve. It has, it's written in Python, and it has a bunch of interesting features. Uh, <clears throat> one is that you can have custom HTTP headers for a specific file or for a full directory by using uh, a .headers file. Uh, there's also a substitution feature. Uh, which I will come back to. Uh, it has a feature called pipes. Uh, substitution is actually uh, one of the pipes. The other pipes are uh, <coughs> being able to below, delay the load and some other things. Stash is a way to store data on the server if you want to um, save some states in a test and then read back the state later. In your stash. Dot assets is a feature to return a file as a, as a complete HTTP response. So the file is expected to contain its own HTTP headers. If that's not enough, you can use Python handlers. So you can write custom Python code to make a uh, uh, a resource behave in a particular way. There's also a WebSocket server for testing WebSockets. This is using the PyWebSocket implementation. Um, as of recently, I think there's also an HTTP2 server for testing HTTP2. Uh, so the substitution thing is commonly used for uh, changing things based on uh, the query string in the URL. For instance, you can have an ID parameter and then get that from the tests itself. Uh, you can either say pipe equals sub to enable the feature, or you can use the file name .sub.js or .sub.html, and then you can use these brackets to uh, get the substitution things. Um, you also need to use this to, if you want to get the particular domains that are being used for the server. So are configurable. There's also a linter that you should use when you're writing tests to make sure that you follow the coding style requirements and uh, whatever else. And the CSS directory has more requirements than everything else in WPT. I think mostly for historical reasons. Um, Maybe we can try to uh, change that, but it needs discussion with the CSS working group, I think. So the README has some links for open.
welcome pull requests, excluding vendor imports, pull requests. Um, it would be good if people spend some time reviewing tests on GitHub. Um, this is kind of a problem with the project right now. Um, I'm not sure how, how we should solve that in a good way, but we should have a discussion about it. And the documentation also has some tips for reviewing and a checklist. Uh, some browser engines have two-way sync with web platform tests. So they have a copy of web platform tests in their own tree. And they have an automatic importer and also an automatic exporter. And in Chromium and Gecko, this is uh, automatic now. And WebKit is semi-automatic. Quite <laughs> <laughs> uh, So there is more work to be done for WebKit, I guess. Um, Edge has, I don't think they have anything automatic at all. Uh, they sometimes import tests and run them. They don't really export tests. Uh, do you know if they're planning to do so? Or? It's just a matter of time, or it's just a policy that it's I don't think it's a policy. I just think it's just they haven't uh, okay. figured yeah. out how to do it. Uh, okay. yeah. I think it's like not a technical challenge they're having. It's a resources and priorities. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think they want to do it. Um, <coughs> So there's a project called Results Collection that Bukup is running uh, different browsers in different configurations to collect results. And this is used for feeding into the wpt.fyi site, uh, dashboard for showing results of wpt. Just showing the WPT that I site. This is different uh, views. One of for test results, which just shows pass rates for each browser, and the other is interoperability, which has different columns for how many tests are passing in all browsers versus how many tests are failing in all browsers and everything in between. Yes. You know how often these get updated results. Twice a day. Yeah. But for every presentation? Yeah. Like including Microsoft sessions? Okay. Uh, I Microsoft is slower. It's like once a yeah. week. Once a week? Once a day. Okay. So it's, it's not the same shot. It's not the same revision that is used there? Same shot. But it's not the same number of tests that are actually run. Yeah, so the number of tests <laughs> can differ because some tests uh, create uh, tests yes. oh, I see. based yeah. on what earlier tests are, do, are doing. Sure. <laughs> uh, so the counts can be up, but it's the same shot for each okay. browser. Cool. I think there's also issues with the test suite running to completion in certain mm -hmm. um, There's a, a material quality issue that is, that is improving steadily. Yeah. yeah. And it's only the stable releases of the tools, I guess. Uh, or, I mean, no, like that, it also know. has data for um, for uh, unstable browsers. Can I enable that? Yes, yeah, so for a TP. So the default view is just showing the stable yeah, versions. Okay. I think there is a query parameter to opt into um, unstable versions. Maybe it should be more visible because I, I never found it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like also new. It's like ah, in the last okay. few months we just started collecting it. Okay, so, okay. So it is new. That. This, uh, this uh, website is mostly, the, the target audience is uh, web developers or browser developers or. Yeah, browser developers. Okay. Visits. Yeah, so beta versions would probably be more interesting for, yeah. for this. Yes, yeah. Yes. Absolutely. Agreed. Uh, if you don't have your the environment set up locally, you can 
use these websites, uh, w3ctest.org is uh, serving a copy of web platform tests using wptserve. Uh, <coughs> we're trying to migrate to a new site. Uh, we're maintaining a Buku for web platform tests .live. Currently, both of these have some issues with our plan, uh, but we're working to ad address that. And eventually, the w3ctest.org site will redirect to the other one. Yes. So any tests that rely on the special domains, those won't work if they're live, right? They will. You can configure this. There's a config file that you have to set up mm -hmm. with the list of uh, domains that yeah. so get us control. If, if the test so is so using the solution stuff, <coughs> basically it substitutes based on the configuration of the server that it's running. Yeah. Right, yeah, okay. so if the test is okay. using substitution correctly, then it should work. It should it's, if it's hard coding. The, right. the yeah, great. Um, <clears throat> there's some stuff around this project not related to the tests themselves, but more uh, about keys and whatever needed for the tooling around it. And we have a pull request open to better documents what the administration stuff are. Uh, so this will probably show up in the documentation somewhere uh, in the near future, hopefully. Um, a problem with the tests in general is flakiness. Mm -hmm. uh, tests sometimes passing and sometimes failing. And um, one of the ways browsers deal with this is disabling tests or explicitly marking them as flaky. So earlier this year, I created a, a dashboard of sorts to visualize which tests are disabled or marked as flaky in multiple browsers um, to kind of prioritize fixing uh, commonly disabled tests first, well, or it, figuring out what's wrong with them. Yeah, in many, well, maybe if uh, a test is fake in all browsers, it's because of the test, but yeah. in many cases, it's because of the bug in the browser. Sure, sure. So. Yeah, it's, it could, could be both. both so, both. trying to change fakeness might actually hide um, bugs in browsers. Yes. That's a good point. We yeah. shouldn't do that. Um, yeah. <laughs> we should figure out what the root cause is and fix yeah. that. Yeah, I also, at least in WebKit, there are also fake nets that are used just because we are running everything. Mm -hmm. So if there are like assertions that are failing and assertions have IDs that are dynamic, then right. there's fake nets even though it's not the test itself. But it's yeah. So in most cases, it's nice to fix the test. For yes. Us. Mm -hmm. Um, so, there were, I created a graph that you can see here, uh, showing the number of tests over time, and it's not really going down. But <laughs> <laughs> so, so it's in percentage? Because if the number of tests is increasing... Yeah, the, the number of tests are increasing, uh, that's true. Uh, but it would be nice if uh, everyone collectively tried to make the graph go down, I think. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Yeah. yeah. Um, earlier this year, we collected a survey for web platform test developers. And we created a report for this recently to uh, summarize the key findings. Uh, most of the ones that responded to the survey were browser developers. Mm -hmm. Um, the documentation was cited as a problem, it needs improvement. Um, <clears throat> another thing that came up is uh, there's lack of governance for the project. Um, there's also little awareness of the single page test feature. Um, so 
if I look at web developers there, it's like two or three person. Yeah. It should be more. Uh, we, we should try to have web developers, uh, they're, they're developing tests, they're, they're using some APIs, yeah. and they're asking us to implement APIs, mm. and the best and easiest thing they could do would be to provide tests for us. Mm. Um, I asked for it in some bugs lab, like people were saying, hey, we should implement this, this API. I looked at the WPT, they were not test, media record API concepts. Yeah. There are two tests, and I, I asked whether they could provide some tests. Um, no response, but uh, <laughs> it would be great if we could uh, have this massive amount of people actually feeding some tests. Uh, yes. Um, uh, one of the problems also is that reviews on GitHub are sort of not happening yeah. much of the time. Um, but I agree that it, it would be good if web developers wrote the tests. Because they are writing tests for their own continuous situations. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah. We had some attempt to do it like this. Test um, like for yes. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. What, what was it successful? No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. the, the tests were the, very low quality and no. mostly yeah, quantity when quantity you had review comments, uh, the people disappeared after the one day that they were yeah. on site. So. Not much anymore. I don't much use for it. Hmm. Well, we can talk, maybe we can talk about this in the discussion afterwards because yeah. I think okay. this is a, big, a cool topic. I have to say. Okay. Um, oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, do you have any more questions? Um, yeah, I have a question. Um, so, WPQ requires to change its answers, and it's required for some tests. Uh, currently, WebKit is not um, enforcing that mm -hmm. because we fear that asking users to do pseudo things and change their configuration might people might not be might, might not like that. So mm -hmm. even our box, I'm not supporting that. Yeah. At least uh, the Mac and the box. I don't know if JDK is doing something something specific. Like that. Uh, yeah. I don't know if what. Chrome, Gecko are doing there if they are actually asking all their developers to change ETC hosts, all their bots. So, Gecko as well as Servo um, has a built in no, system yeah. to, at the network layer, yeah. check something like a host file um, and you know, replace the host okay. automatically, mm -hmm. yeah. which is, I mean, seems to me like the easiest solution. Cool. Sorry, I didn't know. So GTK, I don't know to be honest. Okay, uh, probably not, I guess. Well, I on my system I change etc host. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, I don't know if what what will happen or not. because uh, we mostly run it. I mostly run it through uh, a WPT runner. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that uh, still requires changing etc hosts. Yeah. I think yeah. so. Yes. Yeah, I think it's required. I think that there's a script for doing that, right? But it's providing yeah. the WPT. Are your bots ignoring all of the tests that depend on it? No, they're, they're just failing, basically. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> and if a test is timing out, then it's skipped. That's, uh -huh. that's about it, yeah. Um, well, and, you know, maybe, maybe we should update the Etsy host file on this. <clears throat> but, yeah, we should talk to the admin of this bot. <laughs> yeah. Any other questions? Does your server support uh, limiting the rate that a file is loaded and or stalling yeah. at some point? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. So you can use the pipes uh, feature to specify how fast the resource is load or <coughs> to delay as a start or something. You said that HTTP2 can be kicked in. Do you, do you know how? Um, if there are actually tests using it right now? I only saw it in documentation. I haven't okay. tried it's, or it's looked. It's very recent. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. I don't think I'm scripting this. That's interesting. Yeah. Please try it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. 
is the WPT lint. Does it also get run by the GitHub automated tests that run? Yes. Yes. Sorry, I missed the part of the HTTP two. Is that run in the ISO server? Yes. 